Exercise 6 introduces two new features to our sight reading in first position. And those are the sharp and the natural. These are called accidentals. And there are three accidentals. We have the sharp, which raises a note by a half step, and the natural, which cancels a sharp or a flat. And a flat is the third accidental that we will be covering in future levels. But for right now, I want you to remember that a sharp raises a note by a half step and a natural cancels a sharp or a flat. And I'll go into more detail about that later on in this lesson. But first, we need to get out the nine points. And yes, we will be doing this before every sight reading exercise. And that's because we need a battle plan to make the most out of our sight reading study. And so the first point being the term first position. And by now you know those are the first four frets on the guitar. And we will be making use of all four frets as we are adding the F sharp and the G sharp to the first E string in first position. Point number two, make sure that you begin with a hold technique in first position over the little E string. If you don't know what a hold technique is, then you will want to review level five. And right there is an example of a beautiful hold technique. I've got each finger assigned over each fret. And that's going to help you to keep your eyes on the music and off your guitar. Point number three, make use of alternate picking. If you're a flat picker, make sure that you pick using down and up strokes. And if you're a classical guitarist or flamenco guitarist, to alternate your index and middle fingers when performing free strokes or rest strokes. Point number four is not necessary, and that's because, well, we have 39 measures of quarter notes. So unless you really like counting to four, you can skip on to the next point. Point number five, I want you to say the notes on the page without the guitar. So your focus is on note identification only. And before we get into that, we need to review two of our new notes, and that would be the F sharp and the G sharp. To sharp a note, all you do is add the sharp symbol in front of the note, just like I have here. And what's happening is you're taking a regular F and you're raising it by a half step. Same with the G. If you raise a G by a half step, it becomes a G sharp. And on the chart, you can see that the F moves up a half step to an F sharp. And then the G here moves up a half step to the G sharp. The other accidental is called the natural. And a natural cancels a sharp or a flat. So for example, in measure 15, we have a G sharp in count one, dropping down to a G natural in count two. So that would be like your fourth fret on the first E string, dropping down to the third fret on the first E string. Another example of a natural is found in measure six. We have an F sharp on count three, dropping down to an F natural in count four. And that would be like your second fret dropping down to the first fret on the first E string. There are three rules that govern the way we use accidentals. In this exercise, we'll be using rules one and three since we're dealing with sharps and naturals. Rule number one, any note that is sharp will remain sharp until the end of that measure. Once a new measure begins, the sharp note returns back to normal. So if we look at measure two, on count one, we have an F sharp that sharp remains on any F until the end of the measure. So if I asked you, what is the name of this note right here? If you said F sharp, you would be correct. And that's because this F sharp carries over to this F right here. Another example would be in measure 24, we have a G sharp on count one. And that sharp remains until the end of the measure. So this note right here would be a G sharp. Now, if we want to cancel any of the sharps in this exercise, all we have to do is apply rule number three. And that tells us that a natural cancels any preceding sharp or flatted note by making it normal. So for example, in measure three, count three, we have a G natural. And what that's doing, it's canceling the sharp that we see here in count one. So if we go through this, we have a G sharp, we also have a G sharp here in count two because of rule number one. And then we're gonna drop that G sharp down to a G natural by using the natural symbol. And then the note that follows it is also a G natural. So this natural will influence any other G that follows it. So once again, we have a G sharp, a G sharp because of rule one, 
It drops down to a G natural because of rule three, and then it remains a G natural through the end of the measure. In measure six, we have a G sharp on count one. That drops down to a G natural in count two because of rule number three. And then we have an F sharp in count three, and that F sharp drops down to an F in count four because of rule number three. So once again, you're seeing how the natural symbol cancels the sharps. For our final example, we'll look at measure 11. We have an E in count one, a G sharp in count two, and then we go back to E in count three, and then we have a G natural in count four. So this natural symbol is canceling the sharp in count two. Without this natural symbol, this would be a G sharp. So we're just eliminating the sharp that we had in count two. So now that you understand how accidentals work, you can revisit point number five, and that's saying the notes on the page without the guitar. And this is all about identifying notes. So I don't want you to memorize the exercise. To do that, just pick random notes and say those note names. So for example, what note is this? What note is this? Remember your rules for accidentals. Those are very important. What note is this? And what's this doing? That's a natural symbol. What note is this? I'm just gonna point to a note and you say the name. What note is this? If you said F sharp, that's correct because it's influenced by the sharp in count one. Remember that sharp carries on all the way through. What note is this? And if you said G natural, you'd be correct. It's canceling the sharp in count two. What note is this? And if you said F natural or just a regular F, you would be correct. That natural cancels the sharp in count three. Point number six, I want you to say the notes on the page in rhythm without the guitar. So you will set your metronome for a tempo slow enough so that you can look ahead and articulate the notes clearly. And you will tap your pencil to counts one, two, three, and four as you say the note names in rhythm. Now, the good news is we only have quarter notes, so um, this will give you an opportunity to work on your note identification. So I'm going to go through these with you from measures one through eight, and then you can do the rest on your own. If I'm going too fast for you, you can always slow me down on the media player, but ultimately you wanna be able to get out your own metronome and set it for a tempo slow enough so that you can read accurately. 40 beats per minute, I'll give a four count, and we'll begin. One, two, three, four. E, E, F, F, F sharp, F sharp, G, G, G sharp, G sharp, G, G, F sharp, F sharp, F, F. E, F sharp, G, G sharp, G sharp, G, F sharp, F, E, F sharp, G, G sharp, G sharp, G, F sharp, F. Point number seven, say and play the notes at the same time with the guitar. So now your focus is on note identification in the music and your guitar. Now the result of all this accidental stuff is that you're learning two new notes, and that would be the F sharp and the G sharp. 
The F sharp is just a result of raising F by a half step. That's found on the second fret on the first E string. And if you raise that G by a half step, it becomes a G sharp. And that is found on the fourth fret on the first E string. We're gonna use our second finger to play the F sharp and our fourth finger to play. To get these notes into your memory, I want you to focus on random note selection. So all you're doing is you're just picking a random note on the page, you're saying the note name, and then playing it on your guitar. And the idea is that you're not memorizing the exercise. You're focused on pure note reading. And you can go at your own pace. And once you feel like you're getting a good rhythm at doing this, then you can set the metronome at a slow tempo. Slow enough so that you can one, articulate the notes clearly, and two, so that you can look ahead. Now to demonstrate, I'm gonna play with you from start to finish at 40 beats per minute. Now if that's too fast, you can always slow me down on the media player. So I'm playing the notes in rhythm while identifying them with my voice. I'll give a four count and we'll begin. One, two, three, four. E, E, F, F, F sharp, F sharp. G sharp, G sharp, G, G, F sharp, F sharp, F, F, E, F sharp, G, G sharp, G sharp, G, F sharp, F, E, F sharp, G, G sharp. G sharp, G, F sharp, F, E, F, E, F sharp, E, G, E, G sharp, E, G sharp, E, G, E, F sharp. F, 
F sharp, F, F sharp, G, G sharp. Point number eight, I want you to count and play the notes at the same time. So your focus is on the count while playing the guitar. So you will say counts one, two, three, and four all the way from start to finish. And I want you to pick a tempo that's slow enough so that one, you can look ahead, and then two, you can articulate those counts clearly. And so the idea behind this is to teach you to know your place in the music. There's a lot of distractions that can happen during a performance, but if you maintain the count, even if you mess up, you can always pick up and continue on the following count. Okay, to demonstrate, I'm gonna play with you at 40 beats per minute. If this is too fast, you can slow me down on the media player. I'll give a four count and we'll begin. One, two, three, four. 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 Three, four. 
Point number nine, training your eyes to look ahead. Expert sight readers can see several notes ahead of what they're performing. And one tool they use is recognizing patterns and trends. And one such pattern or trend that we have in this exercise are repeated notes. So this gives us an opportunity to scan the page. When you have repeated notes, you don't have to lock in on the repeated notes. So for example, we have a G natural here, followed by another G natural. You already know this is a G natural, so that should already be into your short-term memory. What you wanna do is, when you play this G natural on count three, your eye is already scanning into the next measure at this F sharp. You don't want your eyes locked in on this G, only to be surprised when you get to this F sharp. So as you're playing these repeated notes, you have an opportunity to scan the page, and that's gonna help your sight reading.